everybody time for a big project today all right we're moving trees around some trees went away and they're going to get replaced with new trees okay and let me show you what i'm talking about right there used to be a very glorious and a very beautiful white sapote tree but it's gone now rest in peace the people that live here did not like that tree it was too tall for them and it was, the fruit would just fall on the ground and splat and they didn't like the flavor of the fruit you know, honestly, that fruit didn't taste the best. I have another white sapote tree over there. It's a Vernon white sapote, and that variety is, tastes so much better. So they want that tree gone. <laughs> now it's gone. And I miss that tree, and I'll tell you why. Because it attracted so many bees. The bee population that would show up in the wintertime when that thing was in full bloom was shocking. You could hear the buzzing from several feet away. The, the whole colony would show up. And pollinate all those flowers it was a beautiful sight but unfortunately it's no longer to you to be but i'm excited because they want avocado trees they want avocado trees there and oh man i'm excited because we're gonna plant a few i, I haven't decided i haven't decided actually i want to put at least two trees there we're gonna put at least two i might even put three i might even get crazy and put three this is about 10 feet of space and it's a little planter but uh yeah i'm excited because we're gonna we're, we're gonna put new avocado trees new grafting projects new opportunities for more trees and more fruit okay let's go let's get started well, the first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rake away all these leaves i'm gonna get them out because i don't want to because i'm gonna start digging holes and i want i don't want the leaves to go in the holes so we're gonna clear this area up clean it up a little bit okay the leaves are cleared uh, I had built a big layer of mulch over the years, so it took quite a while, and now it's time to dig the holes. Fortunately for us, we've been really blessed to live in this area. The soils here are really nice. You can work with them easily. You can dig holes fast. The soil is uh, a lot of sand, a little bit of clay, sandy loam with some clay in it. Really good soil, high quality soil to plant trees in, okay? Okay, the holes are dug. And we dug these holes as wide as possible, as wide as we could. And I'm going to explain to you why in a second. You're going to see why in a second. But let's go see the trees that are going to get moved here to their new home. Let's go look at them. Okay. We're going to move this tree. Avocado. A volunteer avocado tree sprouted here. Someone tossed the seed. Man, this tree is just beautiful. Look at the nice leaves. Tremendous growth habit. It looks so good. It's gonna be an excellent rootstock to graft new varieties on. So we're gonna move that one. And then we're gonna move this one here. This is a reed avocado graft onto another seedling that sprouted here in the tomato patch. Both of these trees are not in good spots. They gotta go, they gotta move somewhere else. And we're gonna move them today. I, I, did, a, I did a video on grafting this tree actually. And there's the graft there, right there reed avocado i'll put the link to that video up here you guys can check it out watch me graft this tree uh this this tree made a few avocados actually it made four or five avocados we already harvested them but uh it's uh, it's time to move these avocados but here's the problem with avocados they are like the divas of the plant world of the fruit tree world they are so sensitive to having their root system touched manipulated moved around touch uh transported they're they're they need extra care and extra attention you know so i'm very apprehensive on doing this in fact me personally i'm two for 25 around that <laughs> two for 25 moving digging up avocado trees like this and moving them somewhere else i've killed so many trees by doing exactly what we're about to do now but the people who live here they want it done so i'm gonna try it even though i suck at it I'm gonna try a little bit different things and hopefully that's gonna work out with these two diva avocado trees. So I love doing videos like this. Let's see what happens. I have no expectations. This is either gonna turn out really good or it can go south pretty fast. <laughs> we'll know pretty quick. Let's go. Is I'm gonna drastically reduce the canopy cover of this tree. I'm gonna cut, basically gonna, I'm gonna cut as much of this tree as I can while keeping it alive. Why? Well, we're gonna disturb the roots. And the roots have to support all these leaves and branches and things like that. And when we disturb the roots, 
they don't have the energy to support all of this growth over here. So we're going to give the roots an easy time while we move it by reducing the stress on them, by cutting away all this stuff that they have to, all these branches and leaves that they have to support. So I'm going to do that, and that will give the roots a fighting chance as they get transported. They'll be, they'll be in a much better situation to grow somewhere else, okay? So I'm going to start cutting this. But don't worry, I'm going to use all these branches for scions to graft onto other trees. So nothing is going to get wasted. Okay, this is what it looks like now. I cut so much back. The graft is here. Hopefully you know, we can save the graft. But if the graft doesn't make it, uh, I can always re-graft re onto this tree. Because it has a strong trunk down here. Good trunk system that it can take another scion. So I'm not too concerned if the graft doesn't make it. But it would be nice if it did. Okay, so the reason why we dug the hole so wide is because we want to preserve as much of that root system down there as we can. Avocados have a lot of little feeder roots that are really sensitive. I'd say 90% of their roots are in the top six to six inches to one foot of soil. So we want to save as much of those little feeder roots as we can by digging around that area right there. So trying to dig this tree out, we damaged the taproot pretty bad. It has a deep taproot that I was not expecting for avocados. That thing just goes way down. I can't pull this tree out. That taproot is deep. Not something I was expecting for avocados. Maybe in certain soils, they'll send a deep taproot. There it is. We were able to get that much roots. Let's take it over there to its new home. Whoa! So, push it in. Yeah, that's a good spot. Lift it up, actually. Lift it up. So we damaged this tap root. Lift it up. We damaged this tap root here as we were digging it out. I'm thinking I should cut it right there below the above the damage because we we basically split this tap root in half. Uh, so I'm gonna cut it here so it can grow back healthily. All right, guys. Here we are. We're back one week later. I had to cut that video short, the planting process short because. Right at that time when we were doing the transplanting, I got a massive headache, like a deep, intense headache. I think I was dehydrated. I didn't drink enough water. I had trained jujitsu earlier that day, and I was just, I don't know, I was out of it. I had to go lay down. It was such a strong headache that it forced me to go lay down. So I had to cut the video short, but here we are. We're back here one week later. Here's what the trees look like. That's what they look like now. And this is kind of what I expected. You see that droopy leaves? They do not look happy. They look really sad. But uh, today I'm going to do some things to them to help them out, to give them uh, a fighting chance to fight back and to start growing in this area. I'm actually really optimistic, actually. I'm very, very optimistic for a few reasons. Look at this. They're, it's The leaves look really sad, but the tree's holding onto the leaves. Like I'm sh trying to shake these leaves off, and the tree's not letting them go. And that tells me, that tells me that the tree has enough strength to actually hold onto these leaves, which is a very, very good sign. Because if I could easily pull the leaves off, that means the tree is weak. It's weak. It's so weak that it can't even hold onto the leaves. So I'm really, actually, really optimistic. Here's the other one. This is the graft. And the gra graft seems like it's still alive. Because this is the leaves of the graft part. And it's holding on. And I'm very encouraged. But today, I'm going to do some stuff that is sunburn. We're going to help this tree out. We're going to help it fight against sunburn by painting these branches. And then I'm going to do some other extra stuff. So watch the video to the end because so I'm going to share some tips on how to help struggling trees like this. There's a few stuff you can do. But let's start with uh, giving these trees some sun, some sunblock.
to help them fight against sunburn because avocado trees are so sensitive to the sun, especially their trunks. They get sunburned just like that within a week at all it took. It actually takes just a few days. If the sun is strong enough, it can even take 24 hours. Those, that trunk will start to get sunburned and your tree, if it gets enough sunburn, it, it starts a cycle of downward cycle, your tree can die. And I've seen many trees die because their, their trunks got hit by intense sun and they started going downhill. So there's an easy fix to that, very easy, okay? Let's go look at it. So this is the paint I used. I got this from the big box store. This is sample size paint. Uh, it's a latex-based, water-based, indoor paint. They don't sell this size anymore. The last time I went to the big box store, they didn't have this size. This cost me about five bucks, and it lasts me more than a year. <laughs> really efficient. Uh, I dilute it with a little bit of water. I'm nearing to the bottom, that's what it looks like. I dil diluted it with water. But if you're messy like me, because I just finished painting this one and I made a big mess. Uh, there's a lot of paint on the ground. <laughs> I don't have a good technique. Um, yeah, if you're you messy, uh, you, can, you don't even have to mix with water. You could just use the straight up white paint right onto the tree, no problem. But if you want it to last a little bit longer, you could dilute it with water, 50-50. Uh, you can even go 75-25, 75% paint, 25% water, no problem. Don't overthink it, but I'm gonna paint now. I'll show you guys how I do it. So this branch, see that branch right there? It's already getting sunburned. It's turning color. It's really, really sensitive. These green branches on the avocado trees are so sensitive to the sun. They do not like being exposed to the sun. And this trunk here is gonna get painted too. Hey, and try not to spill even though I spilled a lot already. And there we go. Nice, nice coat of sunblock here. You could almost hear the tree breathing a sigh of relief from the hot, intense sun. Normally the tree does a good job of protecting itself from exposure, protecting these little sensitive trunks to exposure from the sun but this tree is having a hard time holding its leaves up so we're gonna help it out oh yes so calming so peaceful nice gentle gentle strokes Anything exposed to the sun gets a coat of paint. Okay, okay, okay. All painted up. I made a mess down here. That's what I'm talking about. There's a lot of splatter because it's mixed with water. Uh, by the way, if paint falls on the ground here around the tree, it's never been a problem. I've painted hundreds of trees and made a hundreds of messes and I've never had a, an issue with paint damaging any soil or the mulch around these trees. No big deal, no big problem. Don't need to overthink that. And there we are. That's step number one. That's the first thing I did. I'm going to share with you some other stuff I did to these trees. Let's go. Let's go look at it. Okay, so right now you got to think of these trees as being in the hospital right now. They're in intensive care, they're in special treatment, and so they need some of the best access to the best water and the best nutrients to keep them going. And the best water is rainwater. Luckily, we've been able to, we harvested a bunch of rainwater over there from the last hurricane, Hillary, that hit, uh, <laughs> that hit the Southern California area in August. We got a lot of rainwater from that, 55 gallons. So I've been giving these guys rainwater every day rainwater is a secret something that trees love and they need it especially trees like this that are struggling they love rainwater so we got okay. the water covered and now we got to talk about nutrients these trees need nutrients now more than ever they need all the help they can get and that's where we step in and we give them some of the best nutrients the best fertilizer that will help them recover luckily for us that fertilizer is free 
we produce it constantly. And that fertilizer is, that's right, it's a urine. That's right, pee. Pee on these trees, they've been getting peed on constantly, all right? The first two or three weeks of their life in that their new home, they're getting hit with a lot of urine. And trees love it. That's a secret weapon, all right? That's right, pee. It's crazy. But they like these trees. They like to get peed on. <laughs> Urine has a lot of nitrogen and it has a lot of nutrients, micronutrients that trees absolutely love. And when trees are struggling like this, they're gonna get a lot of urine. Urine, in fact, is so strong, it's so powerful that I have to dilute it. So I do, every time I'll pee in a, <laughs> I'll go pee in that bucket over there and I'll add a bunch of rainwater to dilute it. And I hit them with that, with that mix, that formula. And they, they, trees seem to really love it. If I've given you fruit, in the past, if you know me and I've shared fruit with you, don't worry. I don't pee on the trees that, uh, that produce fruit. I just pee. I just pee on trees that are like that, that are get newly transplanted or trees that are dying or struggling. I just start peeing on them and they seem to recover. All right, so don't worry. All right, let me show, let's, let me show you what, uh, what we got going on here. All right, guys, so we got our formula in a five-gallon bucket. Five-gallon bucket, rainwater, urine combination. Three, the, each tree... Each tree is going to get two to three buckets a day. All right, here we go. Just like that. It's starting to overflow. So I'll go to this one. There we go. Okay. Two to three buckets a day. Regarding, I forgot to talk about spacing. Let's talk about spacing real fast. These trees are planted four feet apart three or four feet apart absolutely not a problem you know i learned my lesson when i went to the wild forest of southern mexico and i saw wild avocado trees in their native habitat growing in the forest less less even less even closer two feet apart one foot apart growing fantastic fantastically growing beautifully growing tall full of fruit both of them so when it comes to spacing especially when it comes to two types of the same tree, there are absolutely no rules to spacing, okay? So plant them as close as, as you want. It's all up to you how close you want, especially when you're planting two of the same thing, mango and mango, avocado, avocado, citrus, citrus. They love being close to each other. They're like, it's like a family, man. Get them really close, no problem at all. They'll produce heavily and they'll produce fantastically, okay? Especially if I start grafting different varieties on here. Oh man, it's going to be a party. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be fun. All right. So if you like that video, if you like me talking about urine, <laughs> give me a like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Let me know how your trees are doing. I always love to hear about it. Okay. Thank you for watching. Bye.